Here we go. Hello, everybody. Hey. Thanks for joining us on Theme Thursday, July 14th, 2022. And Margie, you came up with a really good winner. Why don't you tell us about what we're going to be doing today? Oh, well, today we're going to talk to uh, a number of the people that went to IFS and discuss what we learned there. And we'd also like to hear from the other members about what they're working on, what new things they've learned either through this program or possibly workshops. And uh, so that's what's uh, up. <laughs> that's what's coming up. Well, I wanted to let everybody know, if you, those of you who don't know me, I'm Kathy Anderson, the president of PSSC. Margie is our coordinator, chair, director of our special events with Theme Thursday. Chris has joined in, your vice president. Uh, Bob is here from the board, from uh, uh, our Sunshine Department. And uh, I'm really glad that those of you that are now starting to pop in as my screen is getting uh, more full. Um, we've got Sally also, who's uh, kind of doing some work in the background and she wanted to definitely listen in as to what was going on because she was very busy at IAPS teaching and just hearing all sorts of really good things. And I asked her if she would kindly pipe in at some point with a little bit from the instructor's perspective of what it's like to be at IAPS and be able to have to deal with the minions of a pastel artist. So um, how do we want to start? How about... Uh, what I'd like for people to do is maybe go on mute uh, and then maybe raise your hand or raise the hand uh, so that we can have maybe one person talking at a time. Uh, and then uh, you know, just be kind and respectful to each other so that they can share some tips. And if you wanna have a dialogue going on or a couple of people, that's just fine. Just go ahead and, and mute and add your, com your, your comments, okay? So with that, Margie, would you like to start? And well, that's uh, when I was there, it was my first IAPS ever, and it was really exciting. I stayed at uh, the Hotel Albuquerque, which actually, when I first got in, was kind of a problem. They gave my room away, <laughs> so I had to wait it out. But then um, it was great because everything was right there, very easy to get to and from the classes, maybe go upstairs and change. So although while we were there, my understanding was the weather was really fabulous um, compared to the one a couple of years ago. But I took um, a workshop with a gal that I really, really enjoyed, and that was Steffi Clark. And Steffi is um, fantastic. And what we did in her workshop was we did a vase with flowers and we did grapes. So I'm going to hold this up in front of me. This is actually what we were given as reference material. Can you see that? I have to come up closer to the camera, I think. Uh, or make sure that it's in the view. Oh. She's in the space shuttle. Well, that's the problem. I'm in a black hole. <laughs> she needs to turn off her background okay. and make it real. Okay. All right. So, um, Stephanie actually gave us a packet of photographs and a, a background of. There we go. Okay, so let me see if this will work, if you guys can see it. Okay, so that's also, uh, she, this isn't the whole thing. She gave us a, you know, we'd work on, let's say this area. That was the detail photograph of the grapes because you and I yeah. were in that class here's together. One, here's one where we were, uh, she was emphasizing the grapes and the transition up into the vase we were painting. And then here's one at the top of the vase. And another one. 
this is actually what ideally this is what she did it was just gorgeous and the challenging part about this was she had actually several reflections and shadows through this she had the shadow of the rose on the wall she had the grapes the grapes coming down the shadows in the the vase and um she's super nice very funny we were all entertained um she actually made up some words as she went along when she couldn't figure out <laughs> what the english word was <laughs> so um i did that workshop and then i did desmond o'hagan that was the last day and i studied with desmond several times so um Desmond really has, what I love about Desmond is his sense of color, which is really fabulous and it's heightened. And I took notes on that. And later I can let somebody else talk right now and I can show you the work that I did uh, in Desmond's class and outside of Desmond's class. And I can show you a couple of his paintings that I've collected. That's, that was really, Go that's, ahead. Really, that's really terrific. I, you know, Steffi Clark is from Australia, and I think she would be a wonderful uh, workshop instructor for us sometime in the future and uh, coordinating with her. She was delightful, entertaining, and uh, she used, a, it was pastel mat that she was using, uh, which was a, a paper I hadn't used before. I absolutely loved it. And uh, that was, um, uh, she used a lot of blending in the background. That's an alarm for a reminder. We'll get rid of that one. Um, she used a lot of blending in the background so that when she touched a grape, she didn't want to blend in the grape, but wanted to make sure that the layering came on and uh, came on strong. So that was very insightful. So who's next? Somebody raise a hand or just go ahead and type up and uh, go ahead and share. There you go, Chris. Go ahead and unmute yourself. Okay. Um... Well, I'll give you a little background. I had a blast at IAPT again, and I got there on uh, Monday. I drove there, and I volunteered on Tuesday to help hang the show, which was a great experience. And I also volunteered a couple of, of uh, demos to man the camera, the video camera, so that was kind of fun. But I took Linda Selta's workshop and several other demos. And I'm going to talk right now about what I learned from Linda Selta and show you guys some stuff. And I, if you need more info later, you know, if we run out of people talking, I can talk about some of the demos I did too. I got notes for those. But um, let me start out with Linda Selta. And I'm going to start out just kind of reading some of my notes here. And then I'm going to show you some uh, images. Um, she started out with trying to get us to, before we even sit down and start painting or do anything, to, to try to really think about what you want to say. You know, what are you going to do? Why are you painting this? Uh, she wanted to know what we had to say and who, what did we want the viewer to see or feel? Um, she was talking about selection, elimination, emphasis, soft edges, um select what's important and um avoid temptations in other words don't you don't have to put every little thing in your painting you just need to put what's necessary in there to say what you want to say um decide why you want to paint a particular scene no did we lose you chris yeah. Which Chris? <laughs> Chris Stillians was talking. Chris, did you? Yeah. Hang, hang on a second. Yeah, just a second. Oh, can you hear me now? Yeah. Yes, we can hear you good. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah I, you lost me. You may do that. I've had some pro problems that way. I don't know what that is. Anyway, um, okay. Um, oh, whoops, wait a second. Okay. Um, let's see, where was I? 
decide yes. why you want to paint a particular scene, know your narrative, your story, your intent. Choose your intent and be sure of it. Then she was talking about how to about cropping and format. Um, you know, a lot of us bring our uh, reference photos and we start painting them before we really think about how we want to how it should be cropped. And and the crop should support what you're trying to say in the in the painting. Hello, am I good? Susan, could you please mute? Sorry. Okay, and uh, uh, let's see. Uh, you should identify zones of emphasis. This also helps with edge treatment. Edit for narrative and content. Is there a dominant color? Uh, temperature or value. This addresses atmosphere. Examine the marks you have made. Do they work? Are they directing the eye around the painting? Are they size appropriate? Um, and then... We lost you again. Chris? Hang on a second. There. Oops. Okay, you got me? Got you back. I don't know what's going on there. Um, okay, and then... Uh, Photograph to support what you're trying to say. Chris, can you repeat that line, please? Yeah, just a second. Okay, she uh, talked to us about cropping our image to support what we want to say. And she had us do four thumbnails, um, like a horizontal. I, I did a horizontal panorama, a square, a re horizontal rectangle, and a vertical rectangle. And then, she, and then we had to do a value study. And then we had to add color to those value studies because she likes to add color to her thumbnails. Um, so you got to create a zone of interest, primary zone, center of interest, secondary supports the primary, and the uh, third zone is the area of least concern. Um, when you're painting, you should reference your thumbnails. And now, and she, she had us write a paragraph about our image, what we felt about it, what we wanted to say, you know, and I wrote peaceful, quiet feeling of the end of a beautiful day. And you'll see my image in a minute. But then she wanted you to take two or three main words out of that statement and write it on a piece of tape and tape it on your board before you started painting. And I picked out peaceful, quiet feeling. That, that's what I wanted to say in my painting. So I am going to show you these images now. Hang on a second. And oh, I got to share my screen too. Uh, can you set me up for screen sharing, Kath? Let's see. Can you screen share now? Let me see. Yeah, yeah. I guess that's what I, okay, yeah. Okay. Um, Here's my, can you see that? That's my original reference photograph. And I cropped it into a horizontal panel because I wanted that for me added to a peaceful, tranquil feeling. Um, these are the thumbnails I did. You can see the horizontal one at the top. Chris, are you still talking? Uh oh. So we heard, we heard. Okay, let's see. Oh, whoops, can you hear me now? Yeah. So the last you want to talk about your your thumbnails? Yeah. You can hear what you said. I did the horizontal uh, panorama on the top. That's the one I ended up choosing, and I I I said uh, wide panorama lends itself to a peaceful feeling and helps to draw the eye to the end of the visible river. The square one creates a tension that does not support a peaceful feeling. The rectangle horizontal shows unnecessary uh, top and bottom area that distracts from my intent. The vertical, no movement, it is restrictive. Okay, so th that was my thumbnail. Then, oops. Okay, this is basically an 11 by 14 print that I taped 
and cropped on the print to, to make the reference image I was going to paint. And that's what I was painting from. And that's what I painted. <clears throat> so, uh, oh, and she, when I was painting, she came by to see if I needed help. And I told her, you, you know, the, I'm, I'm getting. Come back, Chris. Chris? Hear me. Can he zoom in on the painting that he's going to show us? That would be nice. Chris, are you there? Are you there? Yeah, just say. I mean, we're, we're hanging on to every word. Uh, one of the things we're wanting to know if you can actually enlarge your references, you know, off of your screen so we can see them better. Really? Because it's filling up my screen totally. Uh, can you hear me now? I, we can hear you now. So you you mentioned something and we, we had lost you and I don't know what it is you were saying, but oh, I'm sure it was brilliant. I was, <laughs> I was saying that I was talking to her about painting some brown in the rocks into there, the local color. And she said, no, nah, brown's got red in it. She goes, you don't, want, don't worry about the local color. Worry about color coordination. Like pick one or two main colors and work with that color and a couple of compliments or uh, I mean uh, secondaries or and compliments, you know. So <clears throat> that's how I ended up with this color scheme here based on what she was telling me, which was kind of an eye opener to me. I thought that was a, one of the best things I learned there. So... Um, let me see. I don't know if I can't, I don't know how to make this thing bigger. It's filling up my whole screen. <laughs> I got a 24 inch monitor. <laughs> yeah. We're seeing mm -hmm. I, I Let's see. What we're seeing are all your little thumbnails. You know what, Chris? You might be, you might have two screens going on and you might have to switch. Oh, let me see. Screen. Yeah, because we're, look, we're looking at the thumbnail screen. Okay. And you're probably looking at the enlargement screen. And you're not seeing this fully. The we're the painting. Thumb. We're seeing the tiny thumbnails of all of your images. Yeah. That's weird. It says, "Please move this window away." At the top of that yeah. little screen. Okay. Let me see if I can take this into Photoshop and see if it'll work better. Hang on a second. Oh, that's beyond my pay scale. <laughs> <laughs> Can you see that now? Nope. No, nope. I can't put it on full screen. Wow, this is so hey, Chris, weird. I texted you a picture of what's on my screen. So you'll see what oh, it is. Okay, let me yes. check it out here. That's, that's one for the historian. Thanks, Gail. Yeah, okay, those are my thumbnails, but when I click on them, they get big and fill the whole screen. You're not seeing that. No. Chris, Chris, when you choose to share your screen, you have to choose, do you get a choice of a lot of little, whatever you want to uh, share? You may be just sharing that Explorer oh, window. I think that might be right, because I saw that what you're talking about. Hang on a second. Um, so how do I go back to the beginning to share my screen here? Let's see, Hot host disabled participant. Oh, it says host disabled participant screen sharing. No. Oh, let's see. Nope. Cancel. Yes. Uh oh. Let's see. What's this? What? No, uh, I know. I may have to get back in the link here. Hang oh, no. on. You're not going out again. You might have to stop share and then just do it again. Yeah. You want me to do a stop share or one participant can share at a time? If you uh, can. Yeah. Can you hear me right now? Yes. Okay, I'm trying to go back into the Zoom thing. I think if you close out that screen and then open screen share again on the other screen, maybe it might work. Well, that's a link. Let's see. I'm, see I'm seeing you guys on the right here, <laughs> but I don't see my regular screen gizmo here. What's up with this? Ah. Maybe we can move on and then Chris can. Yeah, well, let me. Uh, I think I'm going to try to get out of this Zoom meeting completely and come back in. Okay. All right. I have something to share. This is Lynn. Hi, Lynn. Hello. I, um, I have my friend Terry Garson here. She's a member. We're in the Central Coast up at the ranch. And so I'm just excited that we have people from all over the world right now and all over the state and all over the United States. So, hi, everybody. Hello. 
Okay, so I wanted to talk really quickly about Stan Spurlack's workshop, which I took on Sunday at IAPS. And one of the things that I realized that I took away from this is that I need to train my eye to better recognize values. So, you know, values are super important and you can take your iPhone, as you know, and you can turn it to the black and white setting and you can look at your pastels and you can see which ones are lighter and darker and middle. But what Stan challenged us to do was train our eye to recognize value immediately. And I know that the really good artists are doing that automatically. Sally, I'm looking at you because I know you do that. You pick up a light pastel, you make a little square, you pick up the next one you think is the next lightest and you put it next to it and you keep going up the value. Well, actually, if you start with the darks and go up the value scale, you go from the higher numbers, no, the lower numbers to the higher numbers. Either way, start with the dark and go to the light or start with the light and go to the dark. But you need to try to get the values in order, make a gradient from dark to light, and then use your iPhone to look at it and test yourself and see how you did. And if you had some of them out of order, you need to try again. So if you look at what I did on my phone, I did this with color and you can see that I got one or two, looks like one of them out of order. When I turned to my black and white, you can see one of my dark ones should have been down mm -hmm. with the darks. So this is an exercise that he challenged us to do on a regular basis. Like every time you go in your studio, pick up some pastels and make a gradient and see if you're correct. See if your eye is correct. Because once you get good at that, he said, your values will come so much easier to you. And I'm like, that's a no brainer. That's just something I should be doing every day to train my eye better. So I loved that. And then he had us do another exercise where we took a lot of pastels of the same value, different colors, and we built a gradient in the sky using like maybe let's say a lemon yellow and a peach and a blue, all in the same value. When you squint at it, you don't see the edges because they're the same value, but it creates luminosity because you're putting those values, same value, different colors next to each other. And it builds this beautiful luminosity of color. So I guess that's something I kind of knew, but when he demonstrated it, and here's kind of what I mean, if you can see my phone. Yes. He started with one color and then another color of the same value and kind of overlapped that color and then another color and kind of overlapped that a little bit and kept on going. And it just creates this beautiful, beautiful vibration of color. So that's something to practice within your value shapes. When you do, let's say you have a dark value shape, you can put a lot of different warm and cool colors in there of the same value. Same with your middle, same with your lights. And I mean, I know this academically, but it's something I just need to practice. And I think it's good for all of us to practice those things on little exercise pads before we start painting. So that when we go to our actual piece, it's kind of there and it becomes more intuitive, so. I was just gonna show Lynn the thing I take out with me. You see that? It's from the- Oh yeah, the value scale. Yeah, it's great when you go out and you're just there and you could just hold it up to your colors. Yeah. And see if you're really knowing the darks from the middle value range. I tend to uh, sometimes not get enough darks in my work. So this has really helped me. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of us forget to squint. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> we actually need to squint more and step back more often. We don't want to get wrinkles, Kath. <laughs> I know, I know, uh, I know. They, they, uh, they sell moisturizers for that. <laughs> Kath, Kath? Yes, it, hi, Bernard. How are hi, you? Hi, everyone. Um, I would say squint with half an eye. <laughs> <laughs> like, really reduce it. Yes. Down to a one eye and just close your eyelashes. Yeah, and look that's your eyelashes. Slightly more accurate. And guys, here's something that I have in the studio that might be helpful. I have the tone bar. Oh yeah. 
Oh, Carol, correct. we lost you. Carol, where are, where did you go? Australia. She took she she popped out. Come back, Carol. <laughs> All is forgiven. <laughs> well, I, I would I would like to share something. I had the great pleasure of having a newbie come into the pastel scene of Daniel Keyes. So I had a workshop uh, that was originally supposed to be by Olga Abramovich with florals that Daniel was asked to become the substitute teacher. And then it turned out that uh, Corey Pickin with portraiture uh, was not able to come to IAPS. So Daniel was asked to see if he would uh, substitute as a teacher for him. Uh, and the guy was magnificent. He's really well known as an oil painter and uh, pastels are relatively new for him. He was asked to do a one man show with uh, Ginny Burdick up in uh, Fresno. Uh, and he did a whole series of florals, which is something that he's been observing all of his life. Uh, Daniel also had uh, studied under Richard Schmidt for worked on and off with him for 10 years. So we were getting a lot of great instruction trickle down through his student uh, to us in the workshop. But this was very insightful. He said he'll be teaching a workshop. And of course, he's usually doing this in oils. And he's well known for his portraiture. And uh, uh, people will come to him and say, I think my biggest problem is composition. And he will look at their work. And he will find that there's actually four elements that come before composition. And that would be either their drawing is not correct, their values are not correct, the color combinations may not be just right, there's um, the way that the edges were treated or not treated need improvement, and then there's composition. And until you have the other four in line, which are very scientific and mathematical, Drawing is geometry, it's math. Values is scientific, it's the difference between the light and the dark. Uh, color is also scientific. Edges, again, that you're dealing with uh, geometry and lines or no lines or lost edges. And the art part comes in in the last portion, which is composition. But it's almost like saying, well, my little rosettes on the cake didn't, won't stay, but it's because you haven't cooked your batter. So you've got to be able to have those foundational skills in effect before you start really worrying about composition. So people learn to draw. That's, that, was a, that was a good place to start. So that's the little uh, nuggets of uh, wisdom coming from Daniel Keyes. And he won first place, right, in the Pastel World Exhibition. Was it first place or best in show? Best of show. Maybe best in show and best. <laughs> it's magnificent. Uh, don't be shy. People can pipe in. Kathy, do you have anything to add? Did you pick up any pearls of wisdom, Kathy Young? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? There we go. Now yeah. we can hear you. Yes. Okay. My, my computer is really an echo. So am I clear? So Kathy, do you have another, you, you're on two screens. So you have to, you, you must be signed in on another uh, an iPhone or an iPad? There's too many voices. Too many voices. I can't understand you. You're going to have to stay. You're going to get an echo unless you're on mute or you eliminate one of your devices. Uh, uh, I can't understand you that well. Well, well. We'll have you mute for, mute for right now and we'll see if we can't get that figured out. I'll, I'll put something in the chat for you. Uh, Jolene, you were you were at IAPS, yes? I can share something I learned. Oh, unless she's ready. Kathy, are you ready to share? 
but whatever you're on, you're on the black screen. We can't, we don't have a visual on you now. Well, Connie, why don't you go ahead and share? In the okay. Uh, I took uh, Chris Ivers' night uh, night scenes. Can't remember the Not sure stories of the night or something. And I'm I'm. This is obviously a work in progress. Um, and I'll get back to it later. I was really pleased with this, the color that I got for this neon sign. And she was having us put in all of our brights first because she says your darks will get lost. It'll all get muddy. So I, I'm still in that process, getting my lights in. Anyways, after I did that, she gave a lesson on doing neon sun. <laughs> now I have to go back and fix it. And what she said was, and, you can, and now this looks flat to me, even though it's a beautiful neon blue. She was saying whatever, let's say you have the letter X that you're going to do. You, in white, you put your letter X, and then you get about five shades of whatever color you want that neon letter to be. So let's, and she used the example of green and she started with her darkest green and outlined that white. And then she took the next lighter shade and continued till she did four or five shades of that green. And then she says, when you're done, you go back in with your white and pencil it in very carefully in the middle. And it was amazing how that looked like a neon letter just really popped out. So now I have to go back and fix my neon. <laughs> so there you go. That's my sharing. That's delightful. Um, <sighs> so does anybody else have? Can, can you, you hear me now? Wonderful. Yes. Oh, there you go. Okay, I don't, I don't. Know. Okay, so I have a list of things that, um, and Eve Miller, I was the most impressed with, but probably the person I was the least interested in. But when I got done with that class or the demo, I really liked her. So she gave a lot of hints. Um, the bottom of the clouds should be one to two values different, only one to two values. Another one that she gave us is all the corners. Every single corner should look different. Um, Terry Ford, go deeper and darker. And that's her whole motto, deeper and darker. And when I was doing one of our paintings with her, she made me go back in and make it darker in the trees. And I wanted more like sky holes in my trees. She made me put them very, very dark. And I noticed since I've been painting at home now, I have to go back in and make things darker with my uh, Terry Ludwig purple. Um, what else did she say? Oh, I thought this was clever. Um, go to Home Depot or a paint store and get a whole bunch of paint chips and put them together to see what colors you like to mix together, like the greens and purple. We kind of know if you're going to use green, you use purple. But get paint chips and use those to help you with your color study. Um, she d does her skies. She says she has a foolproof sky, and she does analogous colors. So she like, does like blue, blue violet, and blue green. Oh, she had something that she wore around her neck. And I've looked it up. We can't get it in California, but you can get it in other states. I don't understand why we can't get it, but you can get other ones because I've gone online now and looked. And it's called um, Twinkle Bird. And it's a thing you wear around your neck. So if you are inhaling and blowing on your pastels, it should help get rid of the pollution. And the things I've read up on it, it has helped people with asthma. So it probably helped us a little bit, maybe not a lot, but even with COVID, you might want to wear it around your neck. So you can get other, other kinds. And it was really inexpensive, 20, $27. Um, I'm not sure I quite understood this from my notes, but maybe somebody else will. If you're doing from light, uh, painting light to dark, you want 70% light 
30% dark, or if you're going dark painting to light, you want 80% dark, 20% light in your picture. And Bryce. I think that's it. Wow, that's very Thank nice. You. Yes, I like that paint chip uh, recommendation to be able to get a chance to take a look at how those colors are going. Okay, no dead space. Anybody else? So, Kat, I brought my painting up from Desmond. Okay. Uh, and it is. Let me see if I can. Oh, I have to turn off the background. Sorry, guys. I like the background. <laughs> okay. So this is from Desmond. It's one of his uh, paintings. And I believe it's a Paris night scene. Did so you say I, that was Desmond's? This is, yeah, Desmond did this. So I got this at a workshop, not the last one. It was maybe the workshop he did at Desmond Art. Mm -hmm. And that this is one that I did, and this is my martinis up in Ventura. <laughs> nice, Margie. That's beautiful. Thank you. Wow. Oh, my favorite. Occasionally, the art gods are nice to me. <laughs> and so I just highly recommend um, his courses because he's so personable and he really goes out of his way to help you in terms of going around to each student. And he's also, he will ask you whether or not you want him to put some color down on your board or put it to the side. So I think that's nice as well. Of course, I let him on my, the workshop I took, I said, yeah, sure, go ahead. <laughs> So anyhow, that's it. Well, uh, Daniel has offered to show us what he uh, has been doing. Uh, he didn't get a chance to go to IAPS. He's been a little bit busy. So Dan Daniel, why don't you go ahead and catch us up in the meantime? And then uh, others, if you might uh, want to revisit uh, some of the uh, tips that you might have gleaned that we can share after Daniel gets a chance to talk. So go for it, Daniel. Hi everyone. So um, yeah, I've been super busy with my master's program on the East Coast time. So I've been waking up at like 4.20 a.m. just trying to get some drawing and curriculum done. So that's been really fun. Um, they got us doing some master copies in pencil, which is odd. So this is uh, one example here. And it's... um. You're supposed to, you know, copy a drawing by a master artist and really try and uh, experience what they're trying to teach you, you know, with their mark making and such. And we got great instructors like Ricky Mujica and Juliet Aristides um, helping us out. So here's another one. Um, That's a super wow. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. And so it's really great because I feel like I'm uh, building curriculum, you know, for uh, demos and such. I've managed to have some time to work on a, another skeleton painting. <laughs> so this is uh, kind of a romantic scene among the Suaros. <laughs> you know, I have fun with those sometimes. And then um, in other news, at the summer art fest recently i sold a couple of paintings which was really great and one best to show which was really exciting um all right the cm russell art auction is coming up uh, next month in august and last but not least um i gotta finish this for tomorrow it's uh, a pastel i've been working on oh, that's for make your mark yay yay <laughs> Yeah, so it's been super busy in my studio lately. Oh, it's nice. 
That exactly the way an artist studio should be. Super busy. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm very thankful to have time. You know, I'm really um, enjoying that. Uh, I don't know, getting my hands dirty. Sorry, I have to like keep my easel from falling. But my mother-in-law is visiting, which makes it all possible. So I have to like do something really big and say thank you so much because she's been able to help out with uh, little uh, Ignacio. So little Apollo. <laughs> So anyway, that's what I've been up to. I missed IAPS, but hopefully next year I'll, I'll be able to well, you know, you uh, partake. You get two years. Oh, even Good. better. I have even more time to plan. So that's <laughs> exactly. great. But yeah. It's only 850 miles away. <laughs> yeah, in a rocket ship, we can do that. Yeah, right. And listen, guys, if you're needing another fix for a convention, Tell the us, Australian Carol. Pastel Expo is on in September. Where is it, Carol? In Sydney or Melbourne? It is in Bris just north of Brisbane. Oh, Brisbane. Oh, my goodness. Okay, we're there. We it's only 13 it. hours by plane from Los Angeles. Okay. Oh. A stop in Hawaii on the way? Yep. Uh -huh. Oh, that'll take longer. <laughs> <laughs> but it sounds good. So, Carol, are you near uh, uh, Steffi Clark? Uh, Steffi is probably a day's drive down the road from me. Okay. But um, I have had her, I do the Online Art Society, so I've had her as a guest demonstrator on there. Absolutely right. brilliant. Yeah. And from that, I got it on to pastel society of australia as a demonstrator and then she's coming into the expo so she's really really taking off and you guys saw her at iaps yes yes yeah so you, you know and how, both in her class Loved yeah it. yeah and she's just so bubbly and enthusiastic and just yeah everything that you want to know she'll help you with so yeah, highly recommend that you guys have her over there sometime. Oh, I'd love to. She's yeah. so engaging and fun. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, Pastels, uh, Australian Pastel Expo. We're supposed to be alternate years. So this, because IAPS got cancelled, mm -hmm. it went to this year, which is an expo year. So we've, now we've got them both in the same year. It's going to be a bit tricky. Mm -hmm. But it, anyway, it'll be fun. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. So it's on from the 31st of August to the 5th of September, just north of Brisbane on a seaside location. Sounds amazing. Yeah. September. Okay. Yeah. Did you guys, because I didn't come in immediately did you guys talk about the make your mark show the deadline being tomorrow did you already talk about that well we can talk about it again we did mention that oh, okay. it's okay. no go ahead Len, because there's well, a lot more people that have joined we have been blowing up all the society facebook pages with last chance to enter um <laughs> usually we get about 400 entries and i think we're pretty close again this year according to chris um but it's one of those shows that it's online. You don't have to frame it. It can already be sold. You know, you don't have to ship anything. So please consider entering because you just never know what's gonna strike up a chord with the judges. And we have Daniel Keyes, Kim Lordier, and Timing Lim as our judges. So, I mean, I even entered a gecko painting. You know, whatever, whatever strikes your fancy. Just do something fun and look in your studio and see what you have from, it's three years, right, Chris? Oh, three years old? That, is that right, Chris? It has to have been completed in the last three years? Yes, 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 yes. Okay. I was muted. So look and see what you've done over the last three years during COVID, people were painting a lot. And just, you know what, if you don't enter, you don't have a chance of winning. And we have huge prizes and we also have a PSC member prize so if you're a member and you're the highest scoring member you get a special prize nice. so anyway, tomorrow night at midnight is the deadline and i don't know carol what that means for you because you're a day ahead of us 
But you have one more day. I think it is Saturday, correct? If Saturday Australia time, yes. So it's midnight Pacific Coast time tomorrow, Friday, July fifteenth. That's my plug. All right. Love it. Okay. Good. Love it. Like it. Good job. So Chris Overs, do you have anything to share with us? I'm calling you out. <laughs> uh, so. Chris Stillman was in my class with the Lynn Alcelta. And um, so I can't, I don't know what all he said because I had to leave for a little bit, but um, I really loved that, her workshop. It was incredible. Um, I worked on a piece, I can kind of show you, maybe you can see. Um, this is uh, my reference picture. Uh, she had me um, go through the six pictures that I brought and uh, asked me which one really emotionally grabs you. Um, and that was the one. Um, and then as Chris was saying, um, we had to write a little paragraph and everything. And what um, I came up with was um, stormy sky and clouds, the sun breaking through on the water. It's a silver lining. Pelicans are flying across. And so silver lining became my line. And so, like he was saying too, I had to do, um, you know, just kind of explore what kinds of different formats would work best for it. And um, I chose the panoramic one because I felt like that gave the sense of space. Um, and so, um, and like he was mentioning too, um, I had to prioritize which areas were most important. And so most important on this one was that white space over there. And then I wanted to have everything kind of drawing your eye towards that. And uh, to do that, you need to have like, especially in that area there, the highest contrast plus have the sharpest edges and that sort of thing to draw your eye in there. And then this, all the other stuff that's kind of around there is of secondary importance. So you kind of just have soft lines, things that values that kind of blend into each other and um, not the um, strong contrast in between them. So that kind of makes your eye just go to that one spot. So anyhow, I did do a piece, I'll grab it real quick. Anyway, this is how it turned out. So anyway, oh, for me, it's kind of really experimental for me, just working that loose. And um, I really enjoyed it. It was like playing for me. It was wonderful. Did you do like, uh, can you hear me? Yeah. OK. Uh, Chris mentioned that he had to write down three words for his painting. Did you yeah. do that? Uh-huh. Yeah, and actually mine were two words, uh, silver oh. And I don't know if it's backwards for you. Oh. Yeah, it's back. <laughs> um, yeah, so Silver Lining is the, the title of the piece. And um, so because everything is kind of all stormy and everything, I felt like the positive message that's here is that there's a silver lining when there's the storm and the tempest going on. So anyway, it, um, I like the fact of like really being very uh, sure of exactly what your message is, what your story is, what you want to say, what you want the audience, the people looking at your artwork to feel. And that was my big, huge takeaway. I mean, I have a tendency to do a pretty picture and just because it's pretty, you know, that kind of thing. Um, but to have just a real purpose to it was a um, real eye opener for me. I love how monochromatic that is, Chris. Did you purposely keep your colors very muted? Very tonal. Yeah. Tonal. Too, that one of the challenges of being in that room was the lighting was terrible. And um, uh, when I actually saw what it looked like daylight, I was almost like, kind of surprised because some of the colors weren't ones that I thought they were <laughs> because the lighting was so poor in that room. You know what, next so, year, I'm gonna bring my Tron light with me to IAX. You guys, yeah, the lighting in the <laughs> hotel was not great. It was hard to see, yeah. but. I'm going to bring my Tron light next time. So I have you know, my own light. On the positive side about that, though, was it made you focus on values. I mean, you could not see the colors right, but it almost didn't matter because, as we all know, sometimes the colors don't matter, it's the values. So, um, in that regard, 
it still works out, you know, it still turned out okay. How long was <laughs> yeah, the workshop, very, very Christine? Uh, it was a half day. So I think we started at eight, we finished at noon. So yeah, four hours. It was just so, the right amount. Is the conference next year as well? Are you saying it's every other? Every other, so. So it won't be next summer. Yeah. Four, yeah. But I think, isn't Chicago doing one? Well, they have a, a pastel world exhibition every year. So I have, okay. will still have a brick and mortar exhibition every year and an online exhibition every year. So if you enter, you get points toward your master circle if you get in. But the convention itself is only every two years. They call it the biennial. So it'll be 2022, 2024, 2026. Now we're on the even years instead of the odd, thanks to COVID. But um, I have, I have a, a quote from Monet that I wanted to read that Stan Spurlock said, which is really beautiful. Monet said, I do not paint haystacks. I paint the way light hits the haystacks. The illusion of how light affects the scene is what it's really all about. Not what you're painting, but the illusion of what you're painting. I thought that was really beautiful. That's kind of like Lina Celta saying, you know, you're creating poetry yeah. and what you want the viewer to see. What's the illusion you're creating by using your words first and then making the scene? Yeah. Yeah, I love that. I like actually the idea too of having those words actually taped in a spot so that you could actually keep looking at it all the time. So you don't get sidetracked. Um, the other thing with that method too, is you've got the words taped up the top, but I also write my tonal range. So I, I know that I have to stick to that tonal range as well. And that's always helpful. Hmm. I think you also had something that you were showing us uh, that you put up in your studio that has the range of colors. We lost Me. you, Carol, when you had, yes, you were, <clears throat> you were starting to put something up and we lost you. Yeah, the internet dropped out. <laughs> <laughs> um, you were talking about tone bars and having them physically in the studio. So oh, this one, is just painted on, it's one I made, and mm -hmm. it's just painted on canvas and stuck onto a board. And it's pretty old, so it's got some staining on it. But what I was going to talk about was, if you get a pastel, try, try and do it in front of the thing, and you just lay it on there and you just ask yourself, you know, is it, and that gets back to what you're saying, Bernard, squinting across, the pastel to there to I okay, keep going the wrong way to find where it melts into there. So if I get it closer, so does that right. color melt into there or does it go to there? And the other thing with this being on canvas, oh, bit, sorry, I have to look. If I scribble it on there, so I scribbled that pastel on there. You can see how it's not that one because it stands out too much. It's not that one, but it seems oh, to melt into there. So that's the value of that pastel. So by having it physically that you can scribble on it, you can see where it um, disappears into and mm -hmm. there's your value. And then when you're finished, you just get a piece of cloth or tissue and wipe all that off and you're good to go again. Great. That might be a handy hint. I think that's a nice handy tip there, Carol. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, Kat? Yes. Okay, so um, our next theme Thursday, actually going to be with a watercolor artist and his name is Joe Saber. And the title of the um, presentation is called Design is Everything. So if you've traveled on the freeway and you go by 
Westlake Village uh, and you see those beautiful sandblasted um, passes where you go under. Joe actually designed most of all of those. Oh. So do you, know, do you know what I'm talking about? No, I haven't been up to Westlake Village, no. So these are sandblasted underpasses? Well, you know, the bridge that goes across, he does the, um, he, he designs them to, for the artists to go up and, you know, he has workmen that go up and do it in the evening. Uh, but so anyhow, I thought I'd show these. Oh, I have to turn off my silly background. I like it so much. What can I tell you? Okay, none. So here's one of his um, watercolors. And this is, I believe, well, I know it's heading up the coast highway. And you can see it does a beautiful trans, he loves doing skies. He loves doing palm trees. So um, he'll be demonstrating and taking questions. Now, the nice thing about watercolor is if you have a watercolor um, painting, never throw it away if it gets muddy because you can put pastel directly over it. And then here's one that he did with a limited palette, which I really like. It's one of my favorite paintings. That's beautiful. So is yeah. that a, you said that's a watercolor that he's got there? It's a watercolor. So his, um, like many of the people we heard about tonight, he does a lot of conversations on color mixing and color harmony and you know darks and lights of play of and the other thing is he is highly entertaining right now he's doing uh i told him that we could take a few minutes so he could explain it but he's doing art artificial intelligence paintings where um you just say three artists names you put them together and it makes it puts their colors, their basic colors together, and you end up with a beautiful abstract painting. And you can get let it go further. And you'll have to hear him just show you one or two of those because it's absolutely fascinating. Well, this sounds that sounds like a really terrific theme Thursday that we'll be having coming up on July 28th. Correct. So make sure you come back. Um, I don't know Joe, but I'm I'm looking forward to meeting him. And um, Margie, I think we're also, Daniel, I think you're gonna be teaching a class, uh, a workshop for PSSC, right? Yes, I'm working with Maureen on doing one in early November, I think. And it's um, a, a nocturne, how to paint a, a nocturne scene with like some glowing element, whether it's a, a light on in the distance or some skeletons holding hands. This, like, like this, this is oil paint, but it's a nocturne, you know, it's like a kind of a romantic scene. There's narrative there. But um, this is a lot of my popular work, you know, a lot of prints and stuff. But I think you can do the same thing with pastels and it should be a lot of fun to, uh, to do something, paint it with um, pastels, do a night scene, have some fun that way. Oh, and I'm also going to be doing in August 27th, another um, workshop at Destination Art on building the narrative in your artwork. Terrific. So a little plug there. So. Are you doing that in oil or are you gonna do it in pastel? I guess it doesn't really matter what medium, but- uh... Yeah, it's any medium for the Destination Art one. You can use any medium. Uh, you can show up with your watercolors, pastels, oil, acrylic. Really, I'm just gonna be kind of uh, encouraging everyone to develop the narrative in their artwork. You know, it's nice to paint a pretty picture and, you know, just have like a nice landscape or a nice model. But, you know, I, I wanna encourage you guys to, I don't know, uh, connect with people who are looking at your artwork. Maybe there's a narrative there that you can explore. So right. that 
that should be fun. I'm really excited to be, you know, doing workshops again. Right, being involved in, in your little community here yeah. uh, <laughs> and amongst your friends. So it sounds like the tips that we got from uh, Chris and Chris and Chris, right, with Lena Salta, uh, did I have that right, regarding uh, that narrative of being, I really uh, liked what, I, I've yet to take a workshop from Lynn. And uh, that sounds like something I want to put a little bit more thought into. Very interesting. Uh, People of a Pacific Artist uh, Group out here, which is a local group of artists, had a chance for Chuck Kovacic. Kovacic? How do you say that, Margie? You had it right the first time. Kovacic. Kovacic. You know, and, and he talked about even your finished painting or what artists that submitted their work for critique yesterday, he went ahead and he cropped with, you know, the, the L-shaped mat board to create much more interesting dynamic with painting within a painting. And uh, so I, I really learned quite a bit of how to take the narrative to the next level and being able to really zone in on uh, creating more pictures. Lynn, why don't you talk a little bit about that? Because he mentioned that with your painting, that cute little scene that you did up in Tehachapi. Yeah, I think, well, I can't really cut that board. Maybe I could with the saw. But it was interesting because I think if you do thumbnails like Lena Selta had you guys do, then you work it out ahead of time. Otherwise, if you just paint your pretty picture and then you take that mat board and you zoom in on it and you go, oh, I should have just painted that. If it's on sanded paper or something that you can cut, that's great. You can actually just cut your painting apart because you should have focused and zoomed in on this one scene. But I think what I learned from that is we should do this ahead of time. We should do thumbnails of, you know, panoramic, vertical, square, rectangle. We should look at all the formats before we start and make sure we are telling the story that we want to tell and not painting the whole thing and then going, ah, why did I do that? So, yeah. Yeah, and the fact that we had them do it in their values and then actually had them do it in their colors. Yes. So that really made a big difference. And uh, oh, yeah, I, I, I think that we don't want really want to take the time to do all that foundational work ahead of time. Yeah, I mean, the it, more, I think now it's really important. Like now, instead of just painting a painting, now I'll do a study of a painting and then the painting. Mm -hmm. And the, the painting is always better than the study, always, because you learn and you work everything out. And so maybe that's me moving into a more professional mode, maybe even do a third one. But it's that's not the always. atelier method right there. Yeah. No. Yeah, exactly. You can't just, I mean, occasionally you will have this beautiful creation that happens and then you go, how did I do that? But more often than not, it takes the planning. And this is my least favorite part, by the way, the planning. I just want to get into it. But you, if you plan well, then you can have fun painting the painting because you can then just let go and enjoy it. So that's kind of what I'm doing now. Um, sure. And, and, um, go ahead, Bernard. Uh, yeah, so this is the uh, the practical origins of the Grisail, because if a client was spending a lot of money uh, for an artist to paint a picture, and he wanted to have, you know, his house, his wife, um, his angels, etc. cetera, um, the artist would, uh, just to make sure, he'd paint it in gray, hence Grisail. And when it came to looking at the small study and then the 12 by seven feet study, the client would say, oh, well, my mistress is now more important than my wife. I want her in the picture and I don't want the angels in there anymore. I want trumpeteers from heaven. So the artist was able to then make adjustments on the massive gray scale. And, and you know, you've been talking about gray scale, uh, gray scale, grisale all mm -hmm. evening. And that's why it matters um, to, to sort of sum it up. So you eventually build to the final composition Mm -hmm. And there's nothing wrong with being prepared 
as the military would say, you you always want plenty of um, reconnaissance, and this is what we're talking about at oh, a practical yeah. level. Well, one of the things Chuck Kovacic also said yesterday was that he'll paint like 60 paintings a year and he will choose 12 of his best pieces to start entering shows, putting them aside for the gold medal show or the Gino, nice. whatever. So it takes a lot of paintings, kind of like when you're taking photographs, you know, you might take a thousand photographs and then choose a few that are actually worth doing something with. Sure. So that's right. And yeah. you and you must in these days delete what you don't want. <laughs> throw it away. Some that's, people throw away some people. That's very, very important. <laughs> you no, know, I wanted to share another little tip from Daniel. And again, this was from the uh the portrait class. And um he said that he expected people in his class to actually fail or feel like they were a failure. Uh, you know, it was only a little workshop. We had a morning session, we break, we broke for lunch, and then we came back and we had the afternoon session. And he, he basically did a demonstration in the morning session, and then we came back and did the work uh, after uh, lunch break. But he says, you know, accept your failure, learn from it, and that equals success. And he expected everyone to fail in order to succeed. So that was a, a really good takeaway from his class that a failure isn't really a failure. It's actually a success if you learn something from it. And everybody admitted they learned a lot at the end of either one of the classes that I had taken you know, from him. Right, yeah, yeah. The thing Chuck said is you don't have to show anybody your failures. So if you're worried about that, <laughs> that's the beauty of art is you only get the pieces that you feel are successful or that your colleagues have you know corroborated with you that they're successful the other ones can go in the trash or go in your flat file no one has to see them so you know what if you fail it doesn't matter just learn like you said learn from it and keep going like I learned something I shared this at the meeting last weekend all these years I've been painting I never realized that reflections are different than shadows. So shadows are where they are. They're cast where they are. This seems like a no-brainer, but I just never really thought about it. When you go to the beach and someone's wearing a red bathing suit and it's reflecting into the water in the sand, when you move, that reflection follows the viewer. It follows you. Sure. 180 degrees around that bathing suit, that reflection will follow you. So I don't know why I never really thought about that. I just haven't studied reflections long enough. No, well, it's all about direct observation, which yeah. is the whole point about painting outside yeah. or painting in your kitchen, painting in the garden, taking your, pic taking your uh, materials to the beach and sitting there for two hours while your kids are playing. And I, I think, that, it on my I, iPad. I and I think Lynn, that's where you see it. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. we can talk about theory forever. But the actual practice is what we're talking about. And, and so this is what we need to do with the, with the Pastel Society of Southern California, is to create a number of exercises, I think, where we're going out. We're not trying to create masterpieces, but we're trying to create observations. I think if we do that with our proposed paint out uh ideas uh which we're going to develop a lot more i think we're going to create a, a, some really good teaching moments for everybody and that's really the purpose uh the underlying purpose for the future pssc so i hope everyone doesn't mind the theory but doesn't mind the practice too thank you we are that, that was wonderful, wonderful, uh, Bernard, because we want everyone to get a chance to get out there and really ride the wave and uh, get out and enjoy the adventure and the experience of observation. Okay. Chris, did you have something you wanted to type in with? You need to unmute. Yeah, so I have a quick... Um, I, I think I'm unmuted unless my volume is low or something. Oh, you came back in. Can you hear me? Yes. 
Okay. Okay. So I got a question. Um, I'm going to be in Southern California to, um, on Saturday and Sunday because I'm going to go to the uh, CAC um, exhibition and I want to yeah. go plein air painting. So what would you recommend? What places would you recommend near, I want to know, Santa Ana or somewhere in Los Angeles? It's not too far away from, you know, Santa Ana. Do you have some recommendations? Well, Bernard. <laughs> uh, okay, I don't mind answering, but uh, I'm certainly open to more ideas. Uh, so, if we're talking about uh, you are going to what town to stay? Santa Ana. Um, Santa it's for the uh, California Art Club. I'm going to be going there for the exhibition. But um, I'd like to know. Um, it seems like you've painted some scenes that have got cliffs and you can see the ocean, but you're yes. up on a high. Yeah, and it's beautiful. I'd love to do something like that. Well, th thanks for mentioning that. Uh, but it's not a fantasy that I'm painting. Uh, I, happen to, I happen to divide California painting into sea level, right, where you're there on the beach and there are many artists who do that, you know, me, uh, local artists, California Art Club artists. And then there's the other artists who like to go up 200 feet and look down from the cliffs. And that gives a certain perspective, right. which is the management of space. It's not just a different scene it's a different experience and that's very important so if you're in santa ana i would say well uh there's a couple of different places that have height and one of them is laguna okay place. crystal cove is kind of on the sea level but it's got these old funky 1930s preserved buildings which just make natural compositions and then as you go towards the Palos Verdes Peninsula, you're about Palos. 700 feet. And those, those views are completely different from any other views in California. And, you know, it's not that, it, it's, it's about the same radius, if you might, you might say. If you want to go further north, you want to go to Malibu. And it's not just where the stars are bathing the, 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 wonderful offsprings in the world. <laughs> no, 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 it's no, nothing to do with that. It's to do with the Zuma Beach, which is dead flat. What's it called, Zuma Beach? Z-U-M-A. Z-U-M-A, Z -U -M -A. okay. And then north of there, you've got these sacred state uh, parks. And uh, there's a number of them north of uh, Malibu that okay. have these fantastic varied views. There's about six within half a mile. Okay. And, and, the, and, and these are something that you should uh, home in and uh, plan because they are great experiences. And the state beaches and I won't go into too much detail, but Leo Carrillo would be the name to type into your computer. Okay. And so many of us, so many of us uh, over the last 15, 20 years have painted the, so. Okay, I've written it down. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Sure. Take care. Mm -hmm. And take a big paintbrush with you. Okay, I will do. <laughs> can, can I add to that, Christine? If you, if, if you don't have the time to drive up to Malibu or some of those places, depending on what, what's happening that uh, during your stay, you are just inland from Newport Beach okay. and not too far from Laguna Beach. So those would be a couple of beautiful areas, too. I certainly are. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Oh, and, and also, Chris, you're going to see Otto there and Kath. You're gonna, 
I messed up. I, I chose the wrong weekend to be out of town because I went to that gold medal show opening a few years ago. It was amazing. So you're going to love that. I want to hear all about it afterwards. Oh, did you say that Otto's going to the California? Yeah, Otto's show? going to be there. It's a Saturday Great. night, right? Saturday, Saturday night. Yeah, it is. It's yeah, coming up. So, uh, he has a piece in it, so he'll be there. Christine, I'll see you there. Yes. All right. Down there. Yes. That's going to be fun. Yes, we'll have to do a report. We'll report back. Okay. Like Maureen, you have something I, to say, hon? Yeah, I was just going to say, the thing about finding a place, I mean, yes, you can do a, a fantastic panorama or scene, but art, what you can draw is everywhere. I mean, you could get something in Santa Ana that you can't get in Palos Verdes. There are people, there are maybe the way the buildings are, are near each other, or maybe the a person is in the right place. I'm just saying there's there's so much, if you're looking, that you can find that can be amazing. And it doesn't have to be, uh, it doesn't have to be landscape, just landscape. Yeah. I mean, yes, it can, that is incredible. But there, I mean, I was just in the forest and just did some drawings in the forest. Not that they're great, but I was trying it out and it's amazing. So nice. good point. Yeah, true. And, and I want to join in the plein air activities, Bernard. I just uh -huh. hope I can put my schedule with yours. Well, if you just tune in, and if you want to, if you want to I, I normally go every Friday morning. However, tomorrow I cannot do it because I've got <laughs> a bunch of art uh, events happening. So I have to attend to those. But, you know, uh, please contact me as a pastel artist from the PSSA, the PSSC, I should say, but do contact me. We are planning on doing a better form of communication for this. Uh, would you agree, Kath, that we are trying to create a better Yes, everybody, service, that is everyone? definitely in the works. So uh, it, it may take a couple of weeks to get this up and going. Yeah. In, in the meantime, Bernard, why don't you go ahead and put your uh, contact information in the chat so that those who are on the call tonight, if you don't have his information, you can take a photo, you know, take an iPhone or yeah. you know, okay. take a picture so of it and so reach out to Bernard to get onto his mailing list. So at least you will get some direct information from him. And be in contact with them with, with a yay or a nay or whatever. Thank you. So it's Bernard Fallon, the world. The world. There we go. <laughs> no. Could you? <laughs> Sorry. That was a joke. <laughs> Sorry. I do not have that ego. That's somebody okay. else. Put, okay. put that in the chat for people so that they can. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Does anybody else have any guests? Bob. Um, I wasn't at IAPS, but I know uh, one of our favorite people got a, a master's uh, medallion there. That was Joe Mancuso. And yes. I saw on YouTube uh, that somebody had a, uh, a short clip of him going up to get that award. And I told him about it. And I can't remember who had that, but I'm sure he would love to see it if it was, I don't know if Lynn had it or uh, Marty but uh, somebody had a picture or a, a clip of him going up to get his medal and he would love to to see that bob i sent that to him i did oh. send it to him, maybe after you talked to him but i took a video of him going up and it was his first iaps ever and it meant everything to him to be there to get that medallion and well deserved a wonderful guy yeah. really a terrific fella um, one more thing, I was wondering if anybody else, I, I saw that Carol Peebles was there doing a portrait workshop and, uh, you know, she, for a uh, model, she had Albert Handel and yes, she, <laughs> she did a knockout job on that, didn't she? Boy, yes. uh, I don't know, it was just exceptional. Um, so she's another one to uh, look at in the future, maybe for a workshop. But anyway, there's so many terrific painters. Uh, anyway, that's all I had to say, but it was just really, really uh, warmed my heart to see Joe get that medal. I have something I would like to add about the Carol Peebles. 
a demo. Um, <clears throat> so Albert Handel, we all know him and, and how he is. He was sitting up on the stage and trying so hard to be still. And he kept asking her, have I moved? Have I moved? And she said, no, you're fine. You're fine. And I just felt like he was really trying to contain his energy. And then she asked him a question. I don't remember what it was. And, you know, he answered and, and really was coming to life. And then he said something like, is it okay if I talk? And she said, yeah, you can talk all you want. And then he just was like full of tips and stories and was totally entertaining. And yes, she did a great job on his portrait. And I captured a photograph of him that I wanted to hold up to my camera and share with you all because I'm so inspired by it. I'm gonna do a pastel of it. And if anyone else is interested, it would be kind of fun to see how it, it gets interpreted. But he was he had gotten off the stage and he was still talking to her and the light was shining on him. And I just think it's a cool, um, it's wow. sort of, it's looking a little, it's actually very dark around here. So my camera is not really doing a great job of it. But anyway, that's Albert as he's leaving. Wow. I just thought it was fun. Well, that sounds like a future theme Thursday that we have a picture of Albert and we have our renditions of how we do Albert. Okay. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Thank you, now, everyone. Now, do we have to get a release from him for his uh, photograph? <laughs> I don't know. Possibly. I'll ask him. I'll okay. Ask him. Yes. I'll send it to you, Kath, and you can send it Thank to you. him and... I will. That That'll is permission. Be perfect. That'll okay. be perfect. Yes. That I'll, I'll outreach to him. Okay. Uh, Lupe, did you have anything to join? Join in. Oh, she called on me. <laughs> uh, you guys have pretty much gone over it. Yeah. Not much else to say. Well, we had, what was it, Lynn? You said 30 members uh, were able to participate at IACS this year. We did a fabulous job. If you weren't at the meeting, I don't have any problems repeating what I said um, at our Saturday meeting, uh, that uh, the, the Fiesta Night was a tremendous success. Uh, we had some of the most glamorous artists uh, that I know that were uh, doing their signature on Hollywood, and we won. Let me get it, the pinata. Go ahead and talk, Lynn. I'd like to see what's inside it. <laughs> so it's here. We, uh, we got so busy with our art fair on Saturday that we forgot to break them open. So, um, but this was our first oh, no. award. And uh, so anybody who wants to come to the goal setting meeting, you don't have to be a board member to come in and help brainstorm of where we want the society to go for the next uh, year, um, or also our long-term planning, uh, we'll probably, we'll break this open on uh, July 30th, Saturday, July 30th, we're meeting at my house. So I invite anybody to come and join us that day. We're doing a potluck because it's going to be a long day. And uh, if you have ideas and are not able to join us and you want to shoot some ideas out to us, uh, please send them to me or any of the board members and we will put them into the dream machine and uh, see what we can come up with. And a big one is going to be about our education and the direction of um, Pastel Society, what we can do how we can further help and assist our members and uh, the education of uh, what we're doing for the society outside of the workshops that we've been doing and outside of what we're doing with Theme Thursday. And uh, trust me, we'd love to have more people uh, get in contact with Margie to be able to host the Theme Thursdays. Patty, I love your idea. It would be fun, even if people aren't drawing you know, portraiture, it would be fun to just go ahead and have that photograph with Albert's permission 
and be able to see what we can do with it and uh, uh, have fun playing with the fast dolls. But and that's what is, oh, what's your email address? Let me go ahead and put that in the chat for you, okay? okay. Yep. And somebody else can talk while I do that. So, Kath, it's a uh, meeting to plan long term goals, but it's also a kind of a workshop. Like, we're supposed to bring some pastels with us. Uh, no, this is this is our long term goal for the society at large, which is going to be oh, okay. up in the house. Now, Daniel, if you'd like to come up and you want to do some plein air, you're welcome to it. <laughs> it's like, but it's open, gonna... like the meeting starts from nine and it goes to four, right? Correct. Correct. Okay. Yeah. And uh, like I said, we're, we're just going to be open to uh, dreaming about what it is that we would like to do and see. And then we'll spend the second part of the afternoon uh, implementing uh, that into our strategy and uh, setting the calendar for the year, including the shows that are coming up with, which will be our 14th annual member show. And then the next Make Your Mark. I, I don't really want to advertise the next one until after tomorrow. Uh, so let's get through one before we have to deal with another one. And uh, folks, start planning now with uh, your next uh, member show to be able to enter that because that's a show that's for you. And we'll be deciding uh, what month in the spring we'll be doing that uh, for next year for 2023. So, right. okay. We'll okay. keep the momentum going. And Daniel, congratulations. And, you know, I know you're doing a tremendous amount of work and uh, you're enjoying it. I know you're, you are having a good time with everything that you're doing. And it's better than sitting around and wondering what you're going to do. I'm really enjoying it. And, um, you know, hopefully I'll get to see some of y'all at the upcoming workshops. Um, you know, it's nice to jump back into the community. I feel like, um, it's a refreshing, I don't know, I like it. I love to be in a classroom teaching. It's where I, if I was a fish, it's, it's my preferred swimming pool. <laughs> well said, very well said. Any other last closing remarks? Well, everybody, I think it's almost eight o'clock. I think, you know, we have a little bit of sunlight left, at least where I am. And uh, I am observing the atmosphere the way the sunset has been going uh, according to Stan Spurlock's uh, instructions. And uh, I hope everybody has uh, a wonderful rest of your uh, July. Uh, I do hope to see you all and more of you on the 28th for our next theme Thursday. Uh, Joe sounds like he's gonna be a really terrific guy to be able to uh, present to us. And then of course, if you can make it on the 30th, shoot me an email, let me know that you're interested and we'll just accommodate it. And we'll make sure we have chairs and room for everybody and uh, just hope for a really beautiful day. Great, and I wanna thank everybody for uh, joining us. I'm gonna go ahead and stop the recording now. And then if you wanna stay on for a few minutes, that's just fine.